Hello, friends. So in this session, let's talk about the static synchronized methods behavior, right? In our previous uh, videos, we spoke about the synchronized methods behavior. Now in this video, let's talk about the static synchronized methods behavior, OK? So to facilitate our discussion, we have some more boyfriend, girlfriend example methods, example program, OK? Uh, let's uh, let me share my screen. This is a this is a class which is a, a static sync demo. Here you can see there is this main method, the entry point. Here I am launching two boyfriend threads concurrently. These are two different uh, thread objects, boyfriend one and boyfriend two. So here you can see what is this boyfriend one doing. So boyfriend one is saying is invoking the sync method on the girlfriend. But over this it's a static method. The sync is a static method. And then let's see what boyfriend two is doing. It is saying it is it is invoking the count, right? The count is also a static method in this case. Okay. Now let's look, let's look at the what is the, the sync and the count does. Right. Here we are saying, look at this is a static method, but our it is synchronized, right? It is uh, saying it's printing the text uh, lullaby 10 times. Right. Before uh, uh, it's before on every loop iteration, putting to sleep, because we're putting to sleep for two reasons. That is uh, one reason is we want to capture some diagnostic information to see what's happening under the JVM for our for our discussion. And also so that the singing can continue for a little bit more prolonged time. That's why we are doing this. And look at this. This is the count method. Here it, it is also a static method, static synchronized method. It's, it's just printing one to 10, right? It's just saying one, two, three, four. It's printing till 10, but it's sleeping for under millisecond before every iteration. So this is what the program is. Now, when we execute this program, let's see what happens, right? Let's execute this program and then let's see what happens. Okay. See what has happened when we executed the program. We are seeing the lullaby. That is what is the output of the sing method. It's sleeping for every 100 milliseconds and then it's printing it, right? Mm -hmm. It only after the sing method completely completes the boyfriend thread two, the next thread is allowed to enter and then it's allowed to execute uh, the execute the count method. So one to 10 is being printed, right? So what happens now? How this is different? This is the behavior you may say, this is very similar to the, just a non-static synchronized method, right? Based on the previous video, what we discussed, okay? So now, Let's see what 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 happens underlying. Oh, this is different from a non-static synchronized method, right? That that's what we will discuss now. See, friends, look at this. When as a method is static and then it is synchronized, what happens is it also acquires the lock of the underlying object. And friends, I, I strongly recommend you to watch our earlier video on the synchronized method. The link for that is given in the description before coming in here. So it will make more sense if you watch uh, just a non-static synchronized method first and then come to here, right? So look what's happening. When a method is statically synchronized, the thread is going to acquire the lock. But where it's going to acquire the lock, it's going to acquire the lock on the girlfriend's class object not on the girlfriend object. See, every object has a class object in the memory, in the JVM, right? So if, if there is a girlfriend object, there's a class, there is a Java Lang class object for it. So it's going to acquire the lock of that class object, right? So that's what is happening. And boyfriend one comes, it acquires the lock of this class object, not the girlfriend object itself. So since now boyfriend has acquired the lock of that class object, now, when boyfriend thread two comes, it won't be allowed to enter and execute this method. It will be blocked. So now let's look at it under the under the scene under the JVM how this uh, ex executed. To do this, we I I use the white trash open source script which captures a 360 degree snapshot data from your up entire application stack. And now I took the thread dump from it and then I analyzed it using the fast thread two. Let's look at that analysis report. Okay. See friends, here also now you are seeing that there is this one thread is being reported as a blocked thread, right? Here one thread is being reported as blocked. Now look at this. 
here is that same but see look at this it is saying this class the class for this object is blocking one thread right so for this let's look at that earlier non static synchronized method thread dump right let, let me open that up okay friends what i have in the in my firefox browser is uh, a non static synchronized method right uh, the thread dump analysis here is also it says the one thread is blocked but look at the transitive graph it says this object the girlfriend object is blocking one thread whereas now look at what i have in this edge browser the analysis report it says a class object of this girlfriend is blocking the one thread because it's a static method now let's look at this this is a transitive graph which saying boyfriend thread 2 is being blocked by boyfriend thread 1 now let's look at this one the boyfriend thread 2 stack trace now when i click here okay it says this thread started out on this line number trying to execute the run method in this demo class and now when it entered it's trying to acquire the lock but look what it's saying it is acquiring the java lang class object for this girlfriend and then it went on to execute the count method because already the lock for this class object of girlfriend is taken by the boyfriend thread one he's not allowed to move forward he's put to the blocked state now on the other hand if you see this boyfriend zero sorry the boyfriend one who acquired the lock here it says clearly it has acquired this lock of this class object for this girlfriend it was able to progress forward now look at the stack trace of a non-static synchronized method which we discussed in our earlier video this is the thread term look at this it is waiting to lock of that object itself of that object itself it's not saying for the java lang class of that object okay now it is getting going to the block state is this making sense this one what i'm saying Hello, guys. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. So now let's, uh, what we will do, let's make this example, let's make this uh, discussion a little bit more interesting. Now we'll make this, uh, here I have another uh, program where it has one very minor uh, modification to it. Look at this. Now I have made this count to be synchronized, which is, which is not static. It's not static, but synchronized. Whereas this one, sync method is still continuing to be static and synchronized. Now when I execute this program, what will happen? Both of them are synchronized, but one is statically synchronized, other is non-static. When I execute, what's going to happen? Thread 2 will be still locked. What, what are you saying? It's going to be blocked or, yes. or, or, they can, or they can continue execute concurrently? No, it will be blocked. Okay. Anyone else have any different point of view or do you agree? Can you uh, show me that uh, uh, another, yeah, start, yeah, this one. Yeah. See here. Here, boyfriend one. Boyfriend one is invoking. Mm -hmm. as a static method boyfriend through is executing this as a so an object it's coming because count is a not as not a static method yeah so it is same uh, as we saw in the previous example so so you guys are saying it it will be blocked right so what you are saying yeah. is that means lullaby is going to be printed and then after that after all the 10 lullabies are printed then only you are going to see 1 to 10 right yes Okay, guys, look at what's going to happen now. Look what happened. Okay. Hello, boy. One. Hello boy. It's getting mixed up and printed. See, the reason why this is happening is, uh, look at this, guys. When boyfriend one comes, it is executing a static synchronized method, right? The sync is a static synchronized method, right? When a thread one, boyfriend thread one comes, when a method is static, it is acquiring the lock 
of the girlfriend's class object. You see, when the boyfriend thread two comes, it is trying to acquire the lock of the girlfriend object itself. There is a difference. When a method is static, it's acquiring the lock of the class object. Whereas now it is acquiring the lock of the girlfriend object. It's two different locks. Mm -hmm. Since it's two different, they can go and then they can execute concurrently. So that's why you're seeing this mixed up result. The boy, the sing and count is executed concurrently. It's making okay. sense? So uh, this, yeah. Yeah, Go so ahead. this boyfriend one uh, thread has acquired, like uh, it has locked this entire girlfriend class, right? So still uh, some other thread can come and execute uh, uh, other methods. See, see the, it, it's only acquired the lock of the class object. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so the class object is different from the actual mm -hmm. object itself. Okay. 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 Got it. Yeah. Okay, so to confirm this, what happened under the how the JVM eg, eg, uh, execute this? Similarly, we ran that uh, white crash script to capture the data and took the thread dump and we analyzed. Look at this. This is the thread dump analysis report. Now, in this thread dump analysis, you don't see any blocked threads at all. There's no blocked threads here being reported, and there's no transitive dependency graphs. Okay. Okay, friends. Any other questions from you? Okay, then uh, thank you everyone and we'll catch up with you with yet another interesting session. Thank you.